I'm circling back to a topic uh, that was brought up a while ago in the chat about what makes a legitimate memoir in the first place. And I thought that would be an interesting subject to pick up on. Uh, I actually don't remember the context of the comment that I was uh, I was guest presenting at a, a class this week and someone they were talking about quasi memoirs or uh, what what I might call hybrid memoirs, right? When you're trying to do memoir that has a little something else in it. Uh, and it got me thinking about really the broad range of what makes a memoir a memoir or what is memoir these days. Uh, and so this is just kind of a high level recap. I mean, what I think a memoir is, is and continues to be slice of life. The best memoirs, and someone had said this uh, I believe when we did the share session that Susan Ito's memoir felt very much like slice of life in the sense that uh, she wrote this book called I Would Meet You Anywhere, and it is very much her adoption story. So all this other stuff, of course, has happened in her life, but she was able to narrow it down to being almost exclusively about this adoption journey and then making sure to cull the other things, you know, to sort of say, does this have to do with this memoir or not? And that makes it slice of life, even if it happens to span many, many years. And so it goes back to topics we've talked about in the past having to do with aboutness and other things. Um, a memoir is different than fiction, primarily because the memoir, the way the memoirist comes in and makes sense of your experience. So I personally don't believe in the term uh, fictionalized memoir. You know, I, I don't believe that that exists. I think if you want to fictionalize your memoir, then you have a novel. But I also believe that you can and should be able to take creative license. And so it's really about emotional truth and making sure that you stay true to what could have been or what would have been. That is still the terrain of memoir, absolutely. Now, if anybody is pushing you to make your memoir more prescriptive or telling you it's going to be more saleable, if you could just find ways to add more takeaways or to make it uh, have more, just in case you're not sure what prescriptive is. Prescriptive is like when there's something baked into it. It might be that, you know, a food memoir has recipes, for instance. Um, or I can remember books that I worked on at Seal Press. We did a book about a woman who was uh, renovating her own home. And in, and in various places, she had home tips, right? Like tips for renovation or a gardening memoir that might have, you know, how to garden sprinkled throughout. So there's a lot of those kinds of pressures coming from the outside. Uh, but more and more, I'm seeing that we're moving towards some of the topics that Linda Joy and I were teaching in Evolution of Memoir, which are not so much about being prescriptive, but more about being poetic. I, I, I don't know if this is a new trend. It's hard for me to say because sometimes when you're in the middle of a new trend, it's like, am, am, is this right? You know, is this something that's going to last or has it been around for a while? I'm just seeing more people being experimental, being more poetic in their prose, uh, doing this nonlinear fragmented kind of memoir, which allows you to kind of come in at a slant on things and not feel trapped by the linear nature of your story. The nice thing too about that kind of writing is that it allows you to kind of come in wherever you are. And I think it allows you to hold your themes more uh, front and center, which is a benefit. But a memoir is always going to be this articulation of self-understanding that is incredibly important and principle. Uh, and, and it also is going to always off offer your reader an opportunity to enter into your story. And so the other place that I would say, uh, you know, is highly important in memoir writing is to be transparent, right? And to have enough self-understanding that you're not keeping your reader at a distance. Sometimes I'll say to authors that I work with that I can feel the distance, you know, that there it's, I, it's a quality that is actually difficult to name, but you know it when you see it, like the writer is holding something back. And so I do want to encourage all of you in your work, you know, don't hold back. You can always decide to cut something later, of course, when you're in the publishing phase, but just for you, yourself and your own writing process, you know, being able to put it all out there, even the scary things 
and you get to decide later what actually belongs. Uh, but with regard to the legitimacy of memoir, which was what I wanted to uh, sort of circle into today, is that I don't think that there is any one gatekeeper who makes that decision. I think we as memoirists decide what makes our memoirs legitimate. And it is really if you have lived it, right? If you have lived it and it is true, and I'm going to put true in quotation marks because I believe it's emotional truth that we are after. And it is your story and it involves some level of self-understanding and or transformation, then that is a memoir. And I'm excited that we're living as I said, right now in this memoir evolution. And so it's it's wonderful to look around and see that different people are experimenting. You can step outside the box. You can try on different things. You might implode your structure. Some of you I know have done that and trying a different way of entering or a different way of writing. Uh, and I think there's a lot of precedent right now for wanting to shake things up, you know, that a lot, a, there's been a big conversation, um, you know, that sort of this Western dominance in literature has been dominating fiction and memoir. And right now, I think because of so many more voices of color, so many more immigrant writers entering into the space, it is sort of saying, look, this is not the only way that we write. We don't have to do this, you know, rising arc of a narrative followed by a denouement and transformation. You know, we can try all these different ways of coming at stories and use different cultural traditions, different, uh, you know, traditions from other, not just other cultures, but also different countries. So, um, so I just want to encourage you again to play with all of that. And when it comes to legitimacy, you know, really the only person who gets to determine in your legitimacy is you. Uh, the publishing industry is not the holder of all legitimacy. And, and I think it's increasingly more accepting of different narrative styles, different narrative voices, and also just um, interested in how people are telling story. So I appreciate all of you. I hope that you're having fun. Uh, with the writing process and that some of the talks that we have are empowering and liberating. Uh, that is the goal because it is, you know, I, I find the hardest part about memoir is just getting stuck in all of these places around like, what am I allowed to say? Or I don't, I don't remember, or, you know, I don't, that dialogue, I'm inventing it, you know, is that okay? Right. All of that stuff has to be part of the process. It just is. And, and the more you, allow and breathe creativity into your memoir writing process, the more fun and the better story you're going to have at the end of the day. So uh, enjoy. <laughs>